So a guy walks into a crowded Starbucks and he, he goes up to a girl and he says, Hi, my name is Jack and, and I'm a nice guy. That's advertising. So a guy walks up to a crowded Starbucks and walks up to a girl and says, Hi, my name is Jack. Can I have your number? She gives him her number. and That night he texts her. He says, hey, my name is Jack and I'm a nice guy. That's marketing. So a guy walks into a crowded Starbucks. He walks up to a girl. He says, hi. And her friend leans over and says, that's Jack and he's a nice guy. And that's public relations. Today I'm going to tell you three th things. Uh, I'm going to talk about three lessons I have learned um, from being involved with public relations uh, for my entire professional career, including 31 years at Harding. I'm going to talk to you about um, uh, not letting anybody else tell your story. Don't let anybody else tell your story. I'm going to talk to you about some ways that you can tell your story so that other people will remember it. And then I'm going to close with just a bit about um, your personal brand. Okay, so what is public relations? First of all, I don't like to say PR. I do a lot, but I don't like it. I, I lived through the era when we talked about PE. My people who taught in the physical education department didn't like it when we said PE. And so we changed it to kinesiology. That's how I feel about public relations. It's not an adjective. People always say, you have a PR problem. And I always say, no, you have a problem. It's not a PR problem, it's just a problem. The students come to me and they say, I want to study public relations. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I'd like to spend about $80,000 studying it. And so I always have them sit down in my chair and I say, why do you want to study public relations? And nine times out of 10, they'll say, because I like people. And 10 times out of 10, I say, no, Cannibals like people. <laughs> Why do you want to study public relations? And nine times out of ten, they don't really know. So I tell them. And I say, you want to study public relations because you want to be a professional communicator. You go to college and you study nursing, you become a nurse. You go to college, you study accounting, you become an accountant. You go to college, you study public relations, you become a communicator. So the legions of people that I have taught over 31 years, including the two speakers who preceded me, proud moment, I tell them now when you go out in the world, tell them you're a professional communicator. We're not going to be Moses. We're going to be Aaron. When I get to heaven, one of the first things I'm going to ask Moses is, Moses, you're the best leader in the history of the world. Why couldn't you talk to the Pharaoh? What's up? Why did you need Aaron along? I reread that story last night just so I wouldn't say Noah or something silly like that. My worst nightmare is that I'm going to be on Jeopardy and it's going to be like Bible for 100 and I'm going to miss it <laughs> while all my Harding friends watch. So I reread the um, Moses and Aaron story last night and Aaron gets a lot more credit in the Bible than we give him because he helped Moses tell his story. We don't know why Moses couldn't tell his story. Sometimes the best leaders aren't the best communicators. And they need people like us, people like me, to help them along the way. 
That's the first thing I said I was going to do. I was going to tell you that you should never let anybody else tell your own story. You own it. Protect it. Tell your own story. Um, when those students come to my office and ask me about uh, majoring in public relations, um, I remind them of a book that was popular when I first started teaching at Harding um, in 1985, and um, I stole a lot of things from that book. Uh, it was called Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten by a guy named Robert Fulgham. That book, of course, is 30, 30 years old now, but you may want to pick up that book and, and start a new trend um, because I like to say everything I, I learned about good public relations I learned in the Bible. The Bible's full of it. You just have to know where to look. Moses and Aaron, the flood. Today there's a stride to prevent suicide in town, I think. Um, something like that. It's an event. It's drawing attention. People will remember. People will be involved. People will learn. It won't be quite as catastrophic as the flood, but you get the picture. So how do you, how do you tell your own story? Well, first of all, you have to be transparent. I've had five people ask me this morning, how was my night last night? Who knows where I was last night? Just say it out. I was at the Barry Manilow concert, and I'm proud of it, and I don't care what you have to say about it. It was like prom all over. I was the youngest person there and the skinniest. I was having the time of my life. Somebody took a picture of me from the heavens and posted it on Facebook, and within six minutes, every one of my Facebook friends knew where I was. I was not at the Zoe group last night. <laughs> I was not with you guys last night. I was at the Copacabana and loving every minute of it, disco ball and all. So I took advantage of that. I let somebody else tell my story. I said, yeah, I'm at Barry Manilow, and I'm here with all my high school friends, and we're all bald and fluffy. But we don't care. We're just happy to be here. Other people are going to tell your story and do not let them. I specialize in media relations. That's what I do. Along with my buddy back there. I specialize in media relations. And, and if you don't tell your story to the media, the media will tell your story. And P.S. They'll get it wrong. So you have to monitor constantly. What are other people saying about you? Social media is a lot of things, but one thing is good about it, it's a monitor. You can figure out how many people have looked at your page, how many people are paying attention to you, how many people are listening to you, how many people drop by. So the first important thing to remember about a lesson that I've learned about good public relations is don't let anybody else tell your story. Own your story. I'm going to talk about that again just in a minute um, as we conclude. The second thing that I wanted to tell you is tell your story in a way that helps people remember it. Good communicators help people remember things. I teach writing, and I teach writing. Look at you all writing all this stuff down. I love that. It's a little power surge right there. I teach writing. And I teach writing in two different ways. I teach writing for the ear and writing for the eye. If you read a new story, that's different from hearing a new story. The sentences have to be structured differently. Nouns have to be worded differently. Verbs have to be used differently. You have to deal with a subjunctive mood. I taught that yesterday. Nothing like trying to get people excited about the subjunctive mood on 10 o'clock on a Friday morning in spring. So we all sang If I Were a Rich Man from Fiddler on the Roof and we taught subjunctive mood and moved on because that's exactly what it is. Help people remember how to tell your story. I have the Jack Shock High Five and I would like for you to do that right now. Now do this and be very careful because you're not giving me any Star Wars signs or anything or track or whatever it is, but do that. That's all you ever have to know. I've just given you a blueprint 
to help you tell your story or any story every single time. They all have a beginning, they all have a middle, they all have an end. They all have a beginning, they all have a middle, and it usually has three parts to it, and they all have an end. And that is the Jack Shock trademark method of how to tell a story and help people remember it. I could go into a little bit more detail, like, look how cool this is. They have a beginning, look, and then a transition, whoop, and then a first point, and then a transition, and then a second point, and a third, and then a transition, and then we wind it up all together and end with a gut punch. I'll leave that part out because it's Saturday and Easter week and all that. That's how you tell a story. If you have to stand up, if you're an insurance agent someday, and somebody says, stand up, Jack, and tell us what's going on in your area, and you've got 13 seconds to do it, or have 12 minutes to do it. Andrew just left the building, so let's dish. You want to? Um, <laughs> first of all, um, I always say yes to Andrew. Um, and then I think, and then he always knows to text me and say, now you know it's tomorrow. And, and it's 12 minutes. I said, 12 minutes? I can't even say, hey, y'all, at the beginning of my class and in 12 minutes. I can't do anything in 12 minutes. But I'm doing my best in 12 minutes to stay within my um, category. Um, and if it's 12 minutes, if it's one minute, if it's uh, a Tuesday and Thursday class from uh, 10 o'clock to 11.15, it's got a beginning, it's got a middle, it's got an end. Movies have beginnings, <laughs> middles, and ends. Stories have beginnings, middles, and ends. Lives have beginnings, middles, and ends. Ever heard the riddle of the Sphinx? Yeah, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Jesus' ministry had a beginning, had a middle, had an end. That's why I say the best lessons I have learned about being a professional communicator, I take directly from the great communicator. There is no better place to learn storytelling, not fiction. There's no better place to learn storytelling than from your Bible. Now three, I promised you three. Get it? One, two, three. I promised you three. It's about your personal brand. I used to work for the American Red Cross and still do periodically. And one of the things that I was uh, charged with um, was I had to protect the brand. And that meant walking into a disaster shelter after a tornado or a flood or worst case scenario, whatever, and taking a quick scan around. And the first thing we looked for were, were, were the signs. The Red Cross has a, a particular look, has a brand, it's a red cross, and um, it's a particular red ink color from Pantone, if you're familiar with the Pantone series. Um, if the sign is dirty, the very first thing I say is take that sign down and take this um, iPad to the closest print shop and print these new signs. We can't have a dirty sign as our brand. Communicators protect the brand. They help an organization, an institution protect the brand. We're in Starbucks. Starbucks has a brand. Hi, my name is Jack. If you get to heaven before I do, you meet my daddy. I don't want you to walk up to my daddy and say, oh, I saw Jack. The bottle of water that he bought this morning cost more than a gallon of gas. My daddy would give me the talking to that I deserve for buying gassy water for about $7.98. More expensive than gas. Everything's got a brand and you know that. But I'm going to tweak your thinking about brand right now. Because you know McDonald's has a brand, Disney World has a brand, um, everybody has a brand, your social club has a brand. And a brand is a thing 
but a brand is also a promise. And that may be the most important thing that I say, because every person in this room has a brand. And your brand is not just who you are, but your brand is who people expect you to be, want you to be, need you to be. And that's branding from my perspective. I think that's branding from a Christian perspective. I reread just this morning in my Bible about being the aroma of Christ. That's not in my branding textbook in my public relations case studies class, but it's in the Bible. Being an aroma is being a brand. What do people smell when you walk by? They go, ew. Or they go, oh, wow, that's nice. I like that. I'll have some more. And that's what branding is, and you own that. Remember I told you don't let anybody else tell your story. Don't let anybody else define your brand. If you're in the wrong brand, get out of it. You can do it. Pepsi did. If Pepsi can do it, you can do it. Pepsi's just a fizzy drink. What's in it? Chemicals and something. Chemicals. If Pepsi can change its brand, you can change your brand. So I encourage you to do that and to think about it because when you walk by, you want people to get that distinct brand aroma and you'll know where it comes from. At the beginning of this, I introduced you to three people who went to um, uh, the bar, um, Starbucks rather, <laughs> uh, went to the bar at Starbucks and, um, and uh, said, uh, hey, I'm Jack. And the girl says, yeah, you're Jack and you're a nice guy. Well, that one's branding. Because I had the promise she was expecting me to be that. And that's how I'd like to leave you today, is your personal brand is a promise of who you're going to be whenever you walk through, walk in and walk around, walk by, sit by, marry, partner, business, engage in trade, that's your brand. And I want you to work on that. I want you to remember that you should never let anybody else tell your story. I want you to remember that you should tell your story in a way that people will remember it. And all that compacts real neatly into your brand, your personal brand. And I want you to guard that brand and work on it and make sure that um, uh, when you walk by, metaphorically, people say, oh, that was nice. So a guy walks in to a crowded Starbucks. He says, hey, my name is Jack. It's been nice being with you.